going to be making a video focusing on the path the sun takes in the sky. So here we have a place in the United States. The date is about 24th of March, and we have the path the sun takes in the sky. It rises in the east and sets in the west, and it makes a clockwise movement in the sky. So here we have the sun rising and setting and making a clockwise movement in the sky. What I'm going to be saying in this video is the path the sun takes in the sky cannot work in the southern hemisphere on a flat earth model. It might be able to make a bit of sense in the northern hemisphere because it's kind of making a clockwise movement in the sky, but once you talk about the southern hemisphere, nothing works. So just familiarize ourselves with this simulator. So we have sunrise, the sun rises over here and sets in the west. Sun rises in the east and sets in the west. And this can be moved around. So this is a 3D simulator. And here we have it in 2D. Now, look what happens when we change your location. We go closer to the equator. The path changes, so it goes high, the sun goes high in the sky. As we get closer to the equator, it gets quite high. And if you're right over the equator, the sun is going to basically rise vertically and set vertically, more or less. All right. But look what happens when you go to the southern hemisphere. Now, the sun is rising in the east and sets in the west, but it's, it's taking an anti-clockwise movement in the sky. All right, let's go further further south, and we're going to go the south tip of south, of South America, and this is the movement we, we expect to see in the sky. We rise in the east, set in the west, making it an anti-clockwise movement. Now, let's change the date. Now, as you can see, we change the date, and the path the sun takes in the sky changes. So we'll go to 21st of December, or 22nd of December, which is about the solstice. This is the path the sun will take in the sky. It will, it will, it will rise about 135 degrees east, come over your northern sky, and set about 135 degrees west. That is the path in the sky that is taken in the southern tip of Argentina. This is exactly what you're going to see. Now, I want the flat earthers to please explain how this works on a flat earth. Um, I don't believe it can be explained, and that's why I'm going to be offering uh, $1,000 to the first flat earther that can make a model, build a flat earth model, that can make it work on a flat earth. I'm going to introduce my southern hemisphere $1,000 flat earth challenge. If you are a Flat Earth YouTuber that has made more than 20 videos on Flat Earth, the offer is increased to 2,000. So if you know any YouTuber who wants to take on this $1,000 challenge, if you've made more than 20 videos on the Flat Earth, this offer is now $2,000 for the next three months. If you believe in the globe, please send the link of this video to any and all Flat Earth YouTube channels who want to take on this challenge. So this is what my challenge will be. What you need to do is build a mathematical model that predicts the direction the sun will rise and set on the horizon and where the sun will be in the sky, the azimuth and the altitude at any time of the day on the 21st of June, 20th of September and 21st of December for the following cities. Melbourne, Australia, Singapore, London, UK, Ushuaia, Argentina. And you need to explain how on the flat earth, the path, the rays of the sun will go from where it is, the subsolar point, to, to that city. So you need to show the path the rays of the sun will take. So this is the point where the sun is at this moment. And you need to show the path the sun is taking from the subsolar point. So the model needs to depict the shape the sun's path will take across the sky, including whether the sun's path takes a clockwise or counterclockwise path in the sky. The path the sun's rays will travel from the sun to the city. The model will 
predict what time sunrise and sunset will be. So you need to, your model needs to explain, predict what time the sunrise and the sunset will be. The model will be able to identify the sun's azimuth and altitude at all times during the day in all the cities simultaneously. So that means you need to show exactly where in the sky the sun will be at any time of these days, 21st of June, 20th of September, and 21st of December in these cities. It has to be at all times during the day. You don't need to bring any proof. All you need to do is produce a flat earth map that uses a mathematical model or formula that will predict the path the sun will take across the sky in all the cities and the path the sun's rays travel from the sun to the city. The formula needs to be consistent for all the cities and for all the above dates. If the position of the sun in the sky is more than three degrees different than what time and date Dr. Tom predicts, you need to provide proof that time and date is incorrect and your predictions are correct. So here we have the, the date is 21st of December 2019, the time is 1305. This is for Melbourne. This is what the sun will do on that date. It will rise about 120 degrees east and set about minus 120 degrees west and it will come over your northern sky. This is what the path on the same day will do in London. It's going to rise southeast, set southwest, but it's going to go low on your southern sky, quite low. It's um, at this point in the time, it's about 13 degrees high at 1305. So what you need to do is explain on your model why this occurs. Now, this is for Singapore, for this date. This is what is going to happen in Singapore. It's going to rise east, set west, and it's going to um, basically rise vertically and set vertically, rise vertically in the east, set vertically in the west. And that's what you need to explain. Your model needs to explain why that, why that occurs. And this is the time for Ushuaia, Argentina. On the 21st of de December, it's going to rise um, 135 degrees east, set minus 135 degrees west, and it's going to take this path across the sky. So you need to explain why it's doing this. So let's talk about the 21st of December, which is the December solstice. So let's familiarize ourselves with this. Here we have drawn in the equator. This is the Tropic of Capricorn and the Tropic of Cancer. And the sun on this date is going to be traveling along the Tropic of Capricorn. And here I drew in the, the Arctic Circle. On the, on the 21st of December, the sun won't rise. If you're in the Arctic Circle, basically you're not going to see the sun rise on that day. It's going to be um, kind of dark. You are going to have a bit of um, twilight. So you can see here there's, there's different stages of twilight. You have the civil twilight nautical twilight and an astronomical twilight. So if you're in this area here, you're going to have some twilight, but you're not going to have any sunrise or sunset on that day. Let's bring this same day into the flat earth. Here we have the equator. Here we have the Tropic of Cancer, Tropic of Capricorn, and we have the Arctic Circle. And if you put in this time and date, this is what the night time will be. Because, have a look here, this is the southern tip of South America. Here's the southern tip of South America, we're having sunrise. The eastern tips of South America, again, sunrise. In London over here, we're having sunrise. This is sunrise in London. In South Korea, we're having sunset. So this is sunset in South Korea. And in New Zealand, we're also having sunset. So this is sunset in New Zealand. So this is the depiction of the 21st of December. As you can see, something is very strange here. The sun is somehow illuminating more than 50% of the Earth, and its illumination is very strange. So for some reason, the sun's illumination can only reach to the Arctic Circle, but it won't cross it because it's too far. So this is the path the sun is taking on, on that day. It's going around the Tropic of Capricorn, and the night is revolving 
the sun is not going to rise at all in the Arctic Circle, but it's going to we're going to have a very long day in the southern tip of, of South America, Ushuaia, Argentina. We're going to have long days in New Zealand, long days in Australia, short days for the northern hemisphere, long days for the southern hemisphere. So what you need, your model needs to explain is why the sun rays can only reach this far, but somehow it reaches all the way to the southern tip of South America. Look how far it is at sunrise when the sun is at this point. So on this point, that's where the sun is. So the sun is in this point just off the coast of Madagascar, and it's sunrise in South America. But somehow the sun rays can reach all the way there. The other strange thing is that when you're in South America, you actually have to look southeast, as I've shown in previous videos, and I'll show you again in this video. And in New Zealand, you look southwest to see the sun set. So where, where is the sun? And why is, why is the sun rays only here, it can only reach this far, but here it can reach this far, and plus the people over here are looking southeast. So it looks like the sun rays are going, you know, in this type of shape. So it's, it, the sun rays are not straight. In order to explain why people in this area look southeast, perhaps the sun rays are going like this. Now if it is the sun rays going like this, you need to explain why. Why is it that over here the sun rays go straight and over here the sun rays curve and why over here the sun can only reach this far but at the same time it reaches quite far. So basically what I'm saying is that the Flat Earth model doesn't explain this situation very well at all. Now here we have the same situation on a globe. So we're having sunrise in the south, southern tip of South America. The eastern tip of South America is already day. It's sunrise in London. It's about getting sunset in South South Korea. And sunset in Southern Ireland and New Zealand. What I want to point out is this is a very good website. So it's got many features which make things a lot easier to understand. You can turn on the sunbeam. That is the direction the sun is. And this is the subsolar point, meaning that's if you're in this position here, the sun will be right on your head. There will not be any shadow. If you put a vertical stick in the ground, there won't be any shadow because the sun's right on your head. 50% of the Earth is day and the other 50% is night and twilight. So the distance between this point to any point on the sunrise is equal. That means the distance between the subsolar point to any point on the sunrise is equal. The distance from here to New Zealand is equal. Now, why do the people in South America look southeast? They have to look at, at sunrise, they look southeast to see their sun, because that's where the sun is. It is in this direction, southeast. Now, people in London will also look southeast to see the sun. The people in South Korea will look southwest to see the sun set, and the people in New Zealand will be looking southwest to see the sun set. It all works on the globe. None of this works on the flat Earth. In conclusion, this is what actually occurs in Ushuaia, Argentina. The sun rises 135 degrees east and sets 135 degrees west. This is what we would expect on a, on a flat Earth. This is where the sun is. This is Ushuaia, Argentina. So we would expect the sun rising should be northeast and set northwest and come over your head this way. So this is what we would expect. We would expect a clockwise movement from your northeast and coming to your northwest. Instead, we're getting an anti-clockwise movement from your southeast coming over your northern sky and setting southwest. So what you need to do is explain why this occurs and why we don't see this. And you have to explain why the sun's rays can only reach this far to the Arctic Circle, but it can somehow reach all the way to Ushuaia.
Argentina. Good luck. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. I'm planning to make more videos and I'm going to show how the Flat Earth does not work in the Southern Hemisphere at all.